I thought for the final video then of this plug and chug series, uh, we're gonna do one of the classic, uh, classic uh, exam problems from um, a previous final. And so this is from Rimmer's uh, 2013 spring final, and this is a very good example of where to use the divergence theorem, and um, it also brings a small twist uh, into the divergence theorem. So, okay, uh, we want this. Right, we want to find the outward flux through the surface. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And so, all right, so we got this paraboloid, right? Uh, X squared plus Y squared plus Z is equal to 9, and it lies above the plane Z is equal to 5. So, what do I have? All right, um, so essentially, this is really Z is equal to 9 minus X squared minus Y squared. And so then at 5, we have, uh, at z equals 5, we have like an opening, and then we got um, a paraboloid then that goes up to 9 right here. Okay? And here's the thing. S is a surface, all right? And so this paraboloid, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 9, or this guy right here, um, when you see an equal sign, all right, that means then we're, we're just on the surface, all right? Um, that means the inside of this guy is hollow. And, and uh, if you go back to 16.6, you actually see I messed that up, um, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to make an addendum video uh, after this, um, but it's not going to come after this one. So this is technically the last video. Anyways, um, so, so, so we want to find the flux then through this surface, okay? And uh, here, um, that's 5, all right? So that's z is equal to 5 right there. And, and, and so how do we do this, right? So it's always tempting then to use uh, the divergence theorem, and that's definitely the way to go. So by the divergence theorem, right, um, the double integral of f dot n d sigma is equal to the triple integral of um, the divergence of f uh, dv. Okay, and so uh, then for this problem, what do we have? Um, what is the divergence of f? Well, that's going to be equal to um, this first guy, partial x, that's 0. Second guy, partial y, that's 0. Third guy, partial z, that's 1. So the divergence of f is 0, 0, 1. Okay? And, 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 or that's the, that's the divergence, right? And, and so it's 0 plus 0 plus 1. Sorry, because the divergence is going to be, um, this always gets of a scalar. So we just get, end up getting um, the triple integral then of... 1 dv, okay? And our region is going to be this guy. All right, it's going to be this cylinder, uh, this paraboloid. And so, right, uh, we probably want to use cylindrical coordinates. So then this will be z is equal to 9 minus r squared is going to be, uh, is going to be part of the paraboloid, right? That's going to be the top of the paraboloid. And then the lower bound on the paraboloid is going to be 5. So then that's going to be equal to, um, r dz dr d theta, right? Because from dv to this guy, uh, we need to have r dz dr d theta. z is going to go from 5 to 9 minus r squared. Uh, dr is going to go from, uh, so r, uh, r goes from up here, r is 0, and right here, um, at z is equal to 5, right? Um, 9 minus r squared is equal to 5, and so you get 4 is equal to uh, r squared, and r is equal to 2. So the maximum r is going to be 2, and the minimum r is going to be 0, so r is going to go from 0 to 2, and then theta will go from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? And so what is this uh, integral going to be? Then you get 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2, okay? Um, 5, uh, well, this becomes... Uh, 9 minus r squared minus 5 times r um, dr d theta. Okay, so we integrate respect to z, and now we get 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2. This is really uh, 4r minus r cubed dr d theta. So that was simplifying, and that's the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And this becomes 2r squared oops, minus uh, r to the fourth over 4. From 0 to 2, d theta. All right. And what do I get? Well, this becomes uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi. You get 8 minus uh, 4 
uh, d theta. And then you see that, okay, um, so you get the answer then is equal to 8 pi, right? So the divergence theorem calculation gets me 8 pi. And it's tempted to say that this is the answer, right? So 8 pi is on here. And so if we circle 8 pi, um, we move on to the next problem. Um, this is wrong. 8 pi is not the right answer. Why is 8 pi not the right answer? I'll let you think about that for a second. Why is 8 pi not the right answer? None of these calculations are wrong. All right, let's think about what divergence theorem does. Divergence theorem, the first thing in the divergence theorem, or any guy in this flow chart, really, right? If we remember uh, this flow chart, right? The first question we have to ask ourselves is, is the region closed, right? Is the region closed? And when we use the divergence theorem, we automatically assume that the region is closed. So if we go back here to our drawing, right, I only wanted to flux outward through this blue region, right? But by using divergence theorem, I'm also calculating the flux through um, the cap on the bottom, all right? So I'm also calculating the, the green region as well. So divergence theorem then calculates the flux through this entire surface, not just the blue part. So what do I have to do? This then is the divergence through the entire region. Okay. Well, if I if I want just the flux through the blue part, then I would need to subtract out the flux through the green part to get the flux through the blue part, right? Because I have flux through the region is equal to flux through cap minus uh, uh, or plus the flux through the lid on the bottom, right? It's the flux through cap plus the flux through lid um, on the bottom. And so if I just want the flux through the cap, then um, that's going to be equal to flux through region minus flux through cap is equal to um, or minus flux through lid is equal to flux through the cap. OK, so right now, what do we have? Well, we have the flux through the region. Right? That's what we found. This guy was equal to 8 pi. All right. And so that's 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 by using divergence theorem, we get flux through the entire region. And so now we got to find the flux through the lid. Right. And so what is the lid? Well, the lid is going to be this guy right here, right? This green circle, this region right here um, at z equals 5. Right. So at z equals 5. We have, well, uh, 9 uh, minus x squared minus y squared is equal to 5. And so we actually get uh, then x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, right? So um, at the lid, we're really in um, x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So if we do the double integral then of flux, which is just f dot nd sigma, right, what are we going to get? Well, um, we're going to get then f, which is... Uh, Z arctan y squared, some nasty shit, <laughs> comma, uh, Z ln x squared plus 3, and then comma Z, all right, dotted with the normal vector, but what is the normal vector, right? We're on the lid, right? We're on the lid, so we need a normal of the lid, right? What's the normal vector of the lid? Uh, maybe pause the video, try to figure out what the normal vector of the lid is. OK, uh, how many of you guys said the normal of the lid was uh, was this guy right here? All right, uh, pointing straight up. OK, that's wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, we're trying to find the outward flux, right? And if you chose this guy as your normal vector, you're pointing into your region, right? You're pointing into the bowl plus lid. Um, you're not finding outward flux anymore. So the correct normal then is actually going to be this normal pointing straight down. And so now you might ask yourself, wait, how is this different than, uh, why is this different from the Stokes theorem example you just did previously? Well, in Stokes theorem, because it's independence of surface, right? Independence means I don't care what surface I'm on. And so I can just disregard any other surface and pick the surface I wanna be on. Here, it's not that simple, right? Here we're not going to be able to disregard the blue 
um, the blue surface region because in order to calculate the flux through the entire region, I need the blue and I need the green. So now I have to take into account the orientation of the entire region, all right, the cap and the lid, and I need to find the outward flux, right? That's what I'm looking for, the outward flux of F. So when I'm just on the lid, I have to consider which direction is outward. I can't disregard the blue guy. So that means I can't point inside because then I'm pointing into my region. And so my outward region then will be pointing away. All right. So my normal is going to be pointing straight down. Right. And since this is a circle in the XY plane, right. Um, notice nothing's dependent on Z. Then uh, my normal is actually going to be uh, zero, zero, negative one. Okay. And then we have D sigma, but again, D sigma, um, since we're in the XY plane, right, we're, we, we have a two dimensional object in a two dimensional space, um, which is the XY plane, um, then uh, that circle X, uh, only occupies two dimensions. And so we have DA instead of D sigma. And so now this double integral becomes, well, it becomes negative one, right? Okay. Um, it becomes negative, uh, well, it becomes negative Z. Uh, DA. Okay, but remember, where are we? What is Z? Right, we're at Z is equal to five. So this really is then the double integral of negative five DA, which is five times the area or negative five times the area of the circle. Well, the circle is X squared plus Y squared is equal to four. So the radius is two. So it's negative five times pi times two squared. And so it's negative 20 pi. All right, so the flux through the lid is negative 20 pi. And so now by this formula up here, right, flux through the region is equal to flux, uh, flux through the region minus flux through the lid is equal to flux through the cap. Um, this guy, uh, we're, we're subtracting out then a negative 20 pi. And so that gets me then the answer is 28 pi. Okay, and that is the correct answer. 28 pi is the correct answer here. So again, what did we do? All right, so we have this problem. Um, and when you see an equal sign for the paraboloid, uh, that means that uh, you're only on the surface, right? You, you have a hollow inside, and so you're going to have to worry about lids and stuff like that, okay? That's what happens when um, you have an equal sign. And so um, when you use uh, divergence theorem like we did here, uh, the initial calculation of divergence theorem gives us the divergence through the entire region where we assume that... Uh, the region is closed. So what does that mean? It means I have a hollow bowl, but I'm closed off by a lid. All right, I'm closed off by a lid, and I'm calculating the divergence through the bowl plus the lid. All right, so the cap plus the lid is equal to the flux through the region. Um, this is what divergence theorem gives me. All right, divergence theorem gives me the flux through the region, which is equal to the flux through the cap plus the flux through the lid. However, this problem only ask us to find the flux through the lid, all right, because it's the part of the paraboloid that lie. So the paraboloid with an equal sign, um, not a less than or equal to, but an equals to, um, that lies above the plane Z is equal to five, okay? Um, and, and so that means I don't want the flux through the lid, so I must subtract out the flux through the lid. And now the next step is in finding the flux through the lid, which we found was negative 20 pi. And uh, keeping in mind that the normal when we're dealing with the lid has to be the outward pointing normal. So it's this guy, um, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Okay. And then, uh, then we use f dot nd sigma to find the flux through the lid since uh, we're on the circle at z equals 5. Um, we're on the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, which is, equal, which is easy to find. Uh, which is easy to parameterize using DA, but we realize that, hey, we don't need to parameterize anything because once we do this integral, um, we realize that we end up with just five, negative five times the area of the circle um, coming through with a clutch substitution for Z is equal to five, right? And so we get negative Z DA um, from that negative one and then get negative five DA. And then, well, we know the area of the circle of X squared plus Y squared is equal to four, that's just four pi. And so you get negative five times four pi is negative 20 pi. That's the flux through the lid. And now we can find the flux through the cap, which is, the flux through the region uh, minus the flux through the lid, and you get um, our final answer, which is 28 pi. So that's it. That's Math 114. We're done. Uh, so this is going to be the last video in the series, in the plug and check series. Um, I hope you guys 
uh, found this video series helpful. I certainly found that uh, at times it was frustrating to make, but I enjoy a lot of this. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I will be making an addendum video after this, but it's going to be out of order, right? It's going to be an addendum video to um, a, a, a problem um, previously, so you guys won't see that. And uh, so that's it for 114. Again, hope you guys enjoy the class, enjoy the videos. If you guys are considering taking Math 240, uh, luckily for you guys, I do have a plug and check series from Math 240 as well. And yeah, I will catch you guys whenever. Peace.